We're Designing Spaces, the show that's all about you and your space, your home and surroundings. I'm Debbie Murray. Today is Home Improvement Goes High Tech here on Designing Spaces. We've got a collection of topics where technology makes your home more comfortable and up to date. From the smart home to the sublime, we'll show you some home improvements that will put your household on a technological edge. So stick around and see it all right here on Designing Spaces. What do you do if there's a power failure? Well, usually you just wait it out. But what if the power's gone for days or even weeks because of forces beyond your control? Storms and other causes can create a serious problem for home and business. And there is one big home improvement that will not leave you in the dark. Take a look. When there's a power outage, there's a lot at stake. For a small business, it could translate into thousands of dollars of lost revenue. For a home, it's lost peace of mind and security. With so much at risk, a backup solution is needed. Designing Spaces wanted to get some answers. So we met up with Bob Kinsey, a Cummings Generator dealer in Bethesda, Maryland, where extended power outages are common, to take a closer look at residential standby generators. A backup power generator does exactly what the name implies. When the utility power goes off and your house goes dark, it automatically senses that the power is off, starts up, and restores power to those circuits that we have hooked up to it. When the power comes back on from the utility, it automatically senses that and turns itself off. To learn more about the generators themselves, we spoke with Frank Acero, a distributor for Cummins, a leading manufacturer since the 1920s. First off, why is it so quiet? You can see it's got an outer shell, it's got an inner shell, so it's two enclosures in one. Obviously, like we talked about, that's a very important consideration, being quiet, okay? How does this work? Basically, this particular generator is powered by natural gas. The line coming in, the fuel source comes up here, the fuel powers the engine, the engine kicks over in this uh, alternator end. What the alternator is, is basically it's a rotor and a stator. The rotor runs around the stator. That's what produces the power. How is it controlled? Well, here's your controls, okay? All your sense of electronics are here. This is the brains of the operation right here. So how does the engine start? We have the fuel source, but you also need an energy source. That energy source is the battery, 12 volts feeding into. That gives it the spark, okay, that starts the engine, and away you go. There are many different makes and models of standby generators on the market. Basic online research will reveal you get what you pay for. Some of the key factors when selecting a generator are reliability, durability, and serviceability. As far as reliability, you want to research the company you're dealing with. How long have they been in business? How long have they been in the generator business? And then you want to look at the product. You want to look under the hood, if you will. You know, how large is the engine, the alternator end? How easy are the controls to work with? Uh, how fuel efficient is the unit? And then the major consideration, how quiet is the generator? As far as serviceability, uh, even though this is a hands-off automatic system, you do need to maintain the unit. Their service intervals do need to be performed, just like your car. Uh, at Cummins, we have a service network second to none, and Cummins is a engineering company first, not a marketing company. So if you look under the hood of a Cummins unit, you're going to see quality. As far as the different sizes of generators available... The Cummins own in line runs from a 13 kW up to a 100 kW. The 13 and the 20 kW sizes are air-cooled and run at 3600 RPM. We also have a 20 kW that runs at 1800 RPM water-cooled, and those sizes run up to a 100 kW. This particular unit is a 20 kW unit, our most popular cell. This is the most fuel efficient unit on the market today and it's the most quiet. The power this particular generator produces is as close as to your utility power 
as you can get. It's very clean, very precise power. This homeowner selected their generator, a Cummins Onan RS20A. One important decision was deciding where to install it. There are two predominant influences when making that decision. The first is zoning laws, and the second is the integration with their landscaping and architecture, and the impact it will have on neighbors. Back inside the house, Bob describes many of the features on the control panel. Kathleen, this, as I told you before, we have an automatic transfer switch. It also has an exerciser clock. We set it to exercise once a week without load. It also has a battery charger to keep the battery charged. This is a remote control panel unique to Onan. It tells you when it needs service, if there was a fault, and what was the cause of it. Bob, what do we need to do for preventative maintenance? When the generator doesn't work, it's generally because somebody didn't do preventive maintenance. You must have the oil level checked. You must change the oil at least once a year. The air filters, the oil filter, the water in the battery, but it's very important that you do the preventive maintenance. For the homeowner, this will hopefully put an end to a common problem in the neighborhood. I run my business out of the house, and so it's a necessity for us to have power. Um, we did our research, my husband's an architect, and we looked into a lot of different options, and this turned out to be the best one for us. Visit CumminsOnan.com and click on the residential section to learn more about standby generators for home and small businesses. We are out of time for today, but thanks for joining me here on Designing Spaces. It's the show that's all about you, your living spaces, and your lifestyle. I'm Debbie Marie. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. You can visit these websites to learn more about the participants on this edition of Designing Spaces.